So in this video, we want to talk about lenses. And specifically, there are two different kinds of lenses that we talk about for the purposes of the MCAT. There are what are called convex lenses, and these are also known, so let me write this out, convex or converging. And there are these lenses, which are diverging or concave. So concave or diverging. And so these are two different kinds of lenses. And uh, the reason why lenses work uh, to bend light is uh, the same principle that we talked about in our uh, video on refraction, which is that when light hits the lens at an angle, right? so light hits the lens at an angle, uh, angle relative to the surface, and the light gets refracted. And so with a convex lens, the reason why we call it converging also is that the light rays get converged, they get brought closer together, and that's what converge means, right? Um, whereas with a concave lens, it's also known as a diverging, because the light rays that are brought in are brought outward, right? So this looks kind of like this. And the reason why this is important for the MCAT, uh, or the reason why the MCAT likes to test is, in general, when the MCAT tests concepts, the MCAT likes to talk about concepts in the context of medicine. So how does this concept or how does this uh, topic relate to medicine? And the way that this relates to medicine is when we talk about the eye, right? Because in general, what the eye does is the eye uh, has a, in fact, is a converging or a convex lens, this kind of lens, right? This kind of lens. So actually, let me zoom out a little bit so that we can... So the eye is a converging or convex lens. So um, let me draw a side view of the eye, right? So this is the eye, right? This is the cornea. This is the, um, the outer coating, right? And then we've got the pupil. Oops. So we've got the iris, which is a muscle that looks like this, right? And then we've got a pupil, which is essentially a hole that allows light through. And now here's where, we, where it gets interesting. We've got this thing here called the lens, right? Um, and the lens is a converging lens. So what happens is, uh, so let me erase this part. Let me erase this part of the eye, even though obviously we know that it exists. What happens is that the lens helps to gather light. So light comes in like this, right, off the things that we see. So maybe we see a tree, right? It's a very bad tree, but so we see a tree, right? Now the tree is obviously very big, and the light coming off the tree is uh, rather diffuse, right? So the light comes into our lens, and the lens helps to focus the light onto the back of our eye, the receptors in the back of our eye. And the receptors in the back of our eye are known as the retina, right? Um, the, the retina is the back of the eye. It's covered in receptors, right? And so this then obviously sends the signal to our brain. Um, ultimately, this is a physics uh, concept, not a biology concept. But here's where it gets important. People often have disorder with their eye. With Their, uh, their eye is not able to focus light. And so what happens is maybe their lens is unable to bend light uh, far enough toward the retina. So maybe, for example, let's uh, let's let's zoom in on this part of the retina, right? Let's zoom in and let's use uh, this color. So now we zoomed in on this part of the retina. Um, so this is the back of the retina, right? And uh, so one of two things is going to happen here. Um, either, so let me go back. So. This is the back, this is the retina. Either the light is being focused, the light rays are being focused too far, not far enough, or um, so the focus is happening here when it should be happening here, right? So there's a gap here. Uh, or the light is being focused too far. So the light is, is not being focused enough. Um, in which case, what it will look like is, let me use a different color. What it'll look like is, let's use green, is the light will reach the retina, but it will not be focused enough. And so the really the focal point is happening behind the retina, right? And so when that happens, we need lenses. And this is uh, the concept of nearsightedness and farsightedness, right? We need lenses to help bend the light. Uh, we need, uh, otherwise known as glasses, we need glasses to artificially uh, help to bend the light so that the light 
uh, is bent enough that when it reaches the retina, it reaches uh, the retina at, uh, at a precise focus, which is what we want. Right, so it reaches the retina looking like, let's use uh, this color. It's, it reaches the retina as we want it to, right? The focal point of the retina, which is like that, right? You know, it's close enough, right? So this is how we want it to be. And so we often use artificial lenses to, uh, to help create that effect. And so we can imagine, for example, that a... Um, that in the case, if, if the light is being focused too close here, so if the light is, is uh, if the light is being focused here, and we want it to be focused here, then we would use a diverging lens. All right, we would use a diverging lens to get the light bent such that it focuses precisely here, right? And if the light is being focused behind the retina over here, then we would use a converging lens um, so in that case, the light is, let me draw it again. In that case, if the light were being focused, if the light were not bending enough, then what we do is we could use a converging lens to bend the light such that it focuses uh, onto the back of the retina. And so this is one, one reason why we use lenses uh, we use we wear glasses or contact lenses. Uh, this is how they work. This is the principle of how they work. Um, now, what are the types of images that are created by different kinds of lenses? And so, I'm going to show you a trick on uh, how to figure out the, these uh, the the types of images that you're going to get. So, when we have a convex lens, right? Uh, otherwise known as a converging lens. Again, we should remember these terms. We should memorize these terms. Right? Convex, converging. Right? What we can do is we can draw, we can draw a line, a parallel run, line running through the middle of the lens, right? And then we have a point that's called the focal point. This point is called F. And the special thing about the focal point, F, is that all light that comes in the same direction, so parallel, is going to reach the focal point, right? And so that's why this is called uh, the focal point. It's the, the point that, is, uh, that the lens focuses light toward, right? So when we are, when we are given an example of an image, when we're, we're told, uh, so we're told we have an object, and typically the way we represent objects um, is with an arrow, right? So this is an image. I'm going to show you an example. This is a, an example that people have done um, of what this would look like, right? Um, They've used a cap, but we can just use an arrow. So whenever, so you're given an example, right? You're given an example. Uh, you're told uh, you have an object, right? So we're going to represent the object with an arrow, right? And represent the object with an arrow so that we know whether something is upright or or uh, or not, right? Um, and we are told that we have a converging lens, right? So we have a converging lens, and um, let me, let me move the arrow a little bit. And so we know we've got a parallel line running through the converging lens, right? And we've got an arrow. And let's say this is the focal point, and we've got our object closer to the focal point, so inside the focal point, right? What's going to happen, right? So what type of image are we going to get? And the way that we do that is we represent it with two possible arrows. This is the other focal point, by the way, right? represent it with two possible arrows. We represent it with an arrow going like this. So we know that the arrow going like this is just going to go straight here, right? And we represent it with an arrow going from the top of the object and then to the focal point, right? And so what ends up happening is that the top of the object looks, looks like this and the bottom of the object is over here, right? So what we end up getting is we end up getting the object looking like this. Right? And so what kind of an image do we have? Well, it's an image that's behind the lens, or it's an image that's, uh, um, that's uh, further from the lens, on this side of the lens. So it's a real image. And we know that it's an inverted image. Right? So literally, we just have to draw two arrows. Right? Let me compare that with what happens if the object is behind the focal point. Right, or it's oh, I'm not sure what happened there. What happens if the object is so let's draw another one. Let's draw the object again. Oh, let's draw the lens first. Right? 
and let's draw the parallel line. And let's draw our object. This focal point is over here, and the object is over here. All right? So in this case, what would we do? So we have another focal point over here, right? And so in this case, what would we do? We could do the same thing. We could do a line. So we draw one line that runs through the focal point on this side. Right? And then it's going to go parallel. Right? And then we draw another line that runs from the bottom of the object. Right? And so uh, we can draw this line. And then we can also draw, so we know this line is going to go like that. Right? And then we can also draw a line that runs through here and then goes through the focal point. And so what do we get? We get an intersection here, right? And so what ends up happening is that we get an arrow, right? So the top of the arrow looks like this. And, or sorry, so the, so the, so we have the bottom here. So actually the top of the arrow is here. Right? And we have the bottom over here. Right? So in fact, what's going to happen is we are going to end up here with another real image and another inverted image. But this time, it's, uh, it's larger. It's magnified. Whereas this time, it was smaller, real inverted and smaller. This time, it's going to be larger. Right? And so um, this is... So that's uh, that situation. Now, the last situation that we should be aware of with a converging lens is what happens if we have an object precisely at the focal point, and the answer is that we have no image. Um, and uh, you can, I can, uh, I can do an explanation of it, but uh, I think it's just easier to to understand that there is no image when the object is precisely at the focal point of the lens. Okay, and then lastly, we can talk about a diverging lens. Uh, so what happens when we have an object in a diverging lens? So let me draw the diverging lens. Right, and let's draw the parallel line again, and let's draw the object, right? So we've got a focal point, and let's draw. All right, so we've drawn the situation. Now, with a diverging lens, it doesn't matter where the object is. We're still going to get the same result, which is, now let's go ahead and draw it, right? So we're going to get that, and then we know that if we do that, then we're going to get that. And so what's going to happen is, obviously, we're not going to get an image on this side because the lines never intersect on this side, right? But what we do see is that we follow, if we were to follow these lines back, so let me use this color, if we were to follow these lines back, we would get an intersection over here. And what we would get is a smaller uh, object, so a smaller image of the object. And so what's going to happen is that we are going to get, because the, the picture is behind the lens, we're looking at the lens from this side, right? Because the so this is our eye, right? Because the picture is behind the lens, what we're going to get is uh, we're going to get an image that is virtual, upright, and smaller. And so this is the way that you want to understand uh, the different kinds of images that we get from lenses. Now, the last, last thing to be aware of as far as lenses is the concept of the thin lens equation. The thin lens equation tells us uh, the distance of an object and the distance of an image. So let's move down this way. All right, so I know this. I want to include all the, these concepts together because they are very related. So, and the, the thin lens equation tells us about the distance of the object uh, compared to the distance of the image. So we've got one over the focal length, f, is equal to 1 over the distance of the object plus 1 over the distance of the image. Right, And so what that tells us is the distance that the objects and the images are going to appear. So focal length is generally given in terms of, uh, in, in, terms of um, in terms of a number, and that number is going to be either positive or negative. That number is 
is positive uh, for a convex lens or a converging lens, and the number is negative for a diverging lens or a concave lens, right? So you might get a focal length, for example, of 30. You might say, you might be told that this, uh, that this object or this lens has a focal length of 30. Um, and so you know it's positive because it's uh, converging or you know it's negative because it's diverging, right? Uh, and then you plug in uh, the distance of the object from the lens, right? And you get the distance of the image. And so it's fairly straightforward. So distance object, distance image, and the focal length. Uh, so it's a fairly straightforward uh, math problem. It's a fairly straightforward uh, plug and chug as far as equations go. And we will do some examples and we'll see how those examples work out.